Hi guys, it's Jeff, and we're gonna do a quick little update on the hydroponic garden. It's been one week since I posted this short, so if you haven't watched it, here it is right here. It's only 15 seconds. Sheesh, we got some growth. Look at that basil. And I apologize for wearing sunglasses, but it's bright and it's hot here in Iowa. But if you check this bad boy out, look at all this growth we've had in just one week. I'll give you an overview and then I'm going to show you exactly why I went the hydroponic route because this is so easy. Once you've got the system built, it's like an all you can eat buffet for the plants. And I'm really excited to see how the produce end up doing. But anyway, let's turn this thing around and I'll give you a little update on the growth in literally just one week from that short. Also, stick around to the end if you want to see how easy it is to make just little babies like this. Be extremely happy in an all-you-can-eat buffet known as a hydroponic garden. Once you've got this system built, like I said, it's stupid easy. So let's do an uh, update on the growth, and then I'll show you what I have to do every day. And it's not even every day if I didn't want to. All right, so something that's cool is if you check out this basil plant here, it's really shot up in the last week. We have had some beetles, as you can see, that have been eating it, but it's been resilient, and look how happy this thing is. It's, that's insane growth for one week. This onion is really starting to take off. It's starting to get happy. Then we come along all these tomatoes. Now I'm sure there's gonna be somebody on the internet that's like, oh my God, you shouldn't be growing all this stuff together. But this is largely an experiment and I've always wanted to try. So why not give it a shot and see what happens? We have Roma tomatoes and cherry tomatoes. We've got four plants of those. And then this little guy right here, it is a store-bought tomato that had seeds that were growing in it. So we're like, hey, why not? Let's give it a shot. But just look how happy and green these plants are for just being June. Then we take a look. We're pretty sure this is a pumpkin because we planted both pumpkin and zucchini. But if you look at it, just look how insane this growth is. Like this plant, it's really, really happy. It's got leaves that go all the way down to the bottom about to touch the ground. I'm excited to see what happens when this actually fruits up. But it has been being attacked along with the zucchini that's over here and another pumpkin over there. It's been being attacked by a uh, squash borer moth. So we've been killing those left and right about four or five this week. Because I like to come out, even though I don't have to do stuff every day, I do come out and check on the garden every day just to make sure everything's still running and everything like that. So this little guy, it's a strawberry plant grown from seed. You don't see that happen too often and it's actually growing fairly quickly because they do grow very, very slow. Then we come down here and we've got, this is a normal green pepper plant and it, it's pretty okay. But then it's friend here, the jalapeno, it broke off down below during a windstorm that we had this week. So it's not very happy. I'm not taking it out yet because I want to see if it could possibly come back. I doubt it though, because the stem is pretty close to snapped off down in there, as you can see. But then again, this bean plant, as you can see, has already snapped and died in a windstorm once. And it's came back and started growing again. This is a cucumber that we just planted this week. It got transplanted from a seedling where there was only one leaf and in a matter of one week, that's how much it's grown. And then this is its friend. It's not looking so hot, but hopefully it'll get there. Then, just because we're curious, I put a carrot in here. And you can tell that it's really rooting, but I wonder if it's just going to end up being the size of the cup as far as the carrot root goes. So I'm excited to see what happens there. Let's get our little friend back in here. And as you can see, I run a, a version of a deep water where it's constantly cycling. So the roots are always in water, about halfway up the pipe. This is a four inch pipe that I made and all of the, the uh, drain tubing is inch and a half. 
gets pumped up using PEX because this is like commercial grade that you use in your water line, your water lines in your home. Gets pumped all the way up through here and comes on, gets shot into your pipe right here. And each run has its own individual entry point and it just flows as the pipe gets filled up back into the reservoir. Okay, so let's talk about just how easy this thing is once it's built. So when you think about it, plants need sunlight, they need air, and they need nutrients and water. So this is kind of like an all-you-can-eat buffet for the plants when you think about it because it's got water constantly, as much water as it could drink. The water is filled with the nutrients that you need. And then also some of your roots are in the air so you can breathe air and naturally there's sunlight like today is a very very bright day so this is really like an all-you-can-eat buffet this is a, a ryan steakhouse from the 90s for your plants so i'm very excited to see how uh how it grows as time goes on but it's super easy all you have to do is make sure it has water make sure it <laughs> make sure it has nutrients and that's it and i already checked today but i'm going to show you how you check your nutrient level so this particular reservoir it is labeled six gallons, but because of the way that it is set up, it can't hold six gallons of water. Right there is a hole where it would leak out. I've got a self-aerating line right there, so the water is always moving inside the reservoir, hooked to a fountain pump that pumps the water. And now, let's just see how easy this is to check nutrients. As you can tell, there's water in there, but you also have to have nutrient levels. This is the magic stick. This labels your nutrient levels. It's a Blue Lab Trunjan, and I'll leave a link for this in the description just in case you're interested in it. This thing's awesome because there's no th like thought to it. You stick it in the water, and then it gives you a reading. I might flip this over, and I'm gonna flip the camera around so you can read it. So as you can see, it's a Trunjan, and it has all of your readings if you want to go parts per million uh, for 500 or 700 the ec if you're doing it that way or the cf i go off of the 500 ppm and we want to be between 900 and 1500 so what do you say let's see where we're at just going to lift this up and we stick the probe down in the water, wait for a minute, and we can see that it's bouncing between two different levels. When it's doing that, it's telling us that it's between the two particular levels, so let's pull it out. And as you can see, it's between the 300, or 1300 and 1200 is what it was bouncing between. Therefore, we have an appropriate nutrient level. So, because I'm gonna be lazy this weekend, we're just gonna go ahead and top this bad boy off. And this particular reservoir, it only needs water and nutrients maybe once or twice a week right now. And it's 90 degrees outside. So let's just fill this with a hose. So this is all I'm gonna do for the weekend. And I'm gonna let the plants go ahead and suck up the nutrients. I will check the water level just to make sure it's got enough. And when I check the water level, I'll check the nutrient level as well. Because we're running a hybrid system where there's deep water in the pipes. You've got to think, all of these four inch pipes are halfway filled with water as well. So there's plenty of water in this system right now. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching. Please subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And I'll keep giving you updates and let you know how this goes. Like I said, this is vastly an experiment for me, and it's my first time ever doing hydroponics. I just always wanted to give it a shot and see if it's much easier than maintaining a garden. And so far, it most definitely is. But we'll see you next week, and I'll give you an, at least a short update on how we're doing on growth and if the plants are still living. This is Jeff, signing out.